Uh, let's get some analysis on the current crisis. Melvin Levitsky is a former U.S. ambassador and a professor of international policy and practice over at the University of Michigan. He joins us now from Ann Arbor in Michigan. Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us. Um, you served as U.S. Ambassador to Bulgaria when the, when the Iron Curtain and Soviet Union was, was still around. If, you could, if I could begin by asking you how you think uh, Russia may feel threatened uh, by NATO's expansion since the end of the Cold War, because one of the major ideas at the center of this conflict is Ukraine's NATO membership. Well, yes, I assume that that Russia feels hemmed in somewhat. On the other hand, you know, there was a NATO-Russia uh, dialogue, which I thought was quite productive, and so that both sides could understand each other. Uh, the Russians pulled out of that. The question of Ukraine coming in as a NATO member, of course, um, wasn't favorable uh, in, in, uh, in Russia's terms, but there was no immediate proximate cause for Russia to invade Ukraine. Ukraine was not going to get into NATO right away. They don't, uh, it's been made very clear, they don't qualify on the basis of NATO membership. So, um, why the, Rus why the Russians did this? Is Putin trying to reestablish the Soviet Union? Not necessarily, but at least the Soviet sphere of influence. And by doing so, he has violated every international law and international treaty, including the UN Charter, that exists today. So instead of kind of bringing back Russia's name as a great power equal to the United States and NATO countries, He's actually damaged Russia's uh, reputation and Russia's place in the world. Doesn't make sense uh, to me, but uh, somehow in their rather strange logic, it probably makes sense to them. Um, if, if the foreign policy objective of, of President Putin is to sort of revive and to, and to fortify uh, a Russian sphere of influence, what do you think Vladimir Putin's end game is here with this attack? Well, it, it's, it certainly looks as if they want to take over and install a puppet government, a government that would be favorable, that would not even think about um, going into NATO or, or the e European Union. Uh, after all, um, Ukraine has already made a bid to get into the European Union. That would help Ukraine considerably in uh, in its economic policies it also will have to qualify to do that and there will be some stipulations no, but i think um uh, you know it's hard to get into putin's mind i'll leave that to the armchair psychologist about whether he's stable or not but he has had this kind of paranoia about uh, the uh, the old uh, regime having disappeared the soviet union disappeared he's described it himself as the greatest tragedy of the century Mm -hmm. So this is weighing on his mind. Now, what's necessary now is to find some way, as Winston Churchill uh, said many years ago, jaw, jaw, instead of war, war. And we've got to find, well, the Ukrainians and the Russians have to have, have had a little bit of a dialogue already. There may be a, a, a middle ground that they can agree on with perhaps some added autonomy for for the Donbas um, uh, area. There's a negotiating. As a former diplomat, I always believe there's a negotiating agenda. But this is a hard one when the negotiating agenda is threatened by the kind of devastation that you're showing on your screen right now. Mm -hmm. Certainly can't make for peaceful talks. If, if the two sides are to find a middle ground, as you say, um, on the one hand, you have a force that's, uh, that's um, you know, w w with, the, with troop numbers numbering in the, in the 100,000 plus uh, range. Uh, on the other side, you have many Western countries imposing um, very heavy, heavy sanctions. So what do you think the likelihood is of finding this middle ground as a former diplomat? Well, for one thing, here's what I would say about, um, about what the Russians are doing now, what Putin is doing now. You know, it reminds me of the old um, Colin Powell, our former Secretary of State, General Colin Powell, but it was Secretary of State, who talked about the pottery barn solution. That is, 
if you break it, it's yours in the pottery barn, which means if you break a, a pot, it's, you have to buy it in this store. Do, does Russia really want to run Ukraine? That would be very difficult to be a lot of op opposition. If they put a puppet government in, Ukrainian citizens are not going to accept that. So they've got a real dilemma in their hands. That's why, and plus the idea, the sanctions that are coming in are penalizing them greatly. Their economy is not in good shape at this point. And uh, it will get worse, especially if it's cut off from the international financial system, which is what we and other countries are doing now. So these, uh, you know, sanctions are designed to change behavior. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't, and sometimes they take a little time. These are not, it's not going to be an immediate reaction, I think, in any case. But they're a way of, of uh, trying to change behavior short of war. So I think so far the United States and the uh, Western countries have done a pretty good job and a strategic job of trying to dissuade Russia from basically just taking over Ukraine and destroying it. You can see the devastation that's happening already. Yeah. Russia is being condemned. People walked out uh, of the, uh, the UN General Assembly meeting uh, uh, today uh, when uh, the, um, the Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov began to speak. Uh, this is exactly the opposite of what Putin has said he wants to do, which is restore Russia's greatness. Yeah. Um, that may work on it to work on him and on his leadership to help, um, persuade them to find a peaceful solution to this with some concessions on both sides. Whether the sanctions work or not, time will tell. But one thing is for certain, these are perhaps uh, the 21st century's most uh, strictest, toughest sanctions to be imposed um, on a country. All right, uh, Mr. Ambassador Melvin Levitsky, thank you very much for joining Absolutely, us. Absolutely, that's right. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. It's good to talk with you. Good to talk to you.